Great. Welcome, everyone. It's nice to see you all again in 2022. It's off to a crazy start, as is the norm these days, but um, it's great to have this group back together. And um, I'd like to start by calling to order the January 10th, 2022 Parks and Recreation Board meeting. Could we please call the roll? So we have Aaron Angle. It's Aaron Angel, and I'm here. Angel. Sorry. Aaron okay. Angel. Scott Conlon. Right here. I believe Jeff Allen Bogan gave his apologies for tonight's meeting. Manoj Ganwar, we're waiting on. Paige Lewis. Here. Nicholas Novello. Here. Dan Olson. Here. And Tim Waters. I'm here. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Nikki. And welcome to Aaron, our new board member, and to Councilman Waters, our new liaison. Great to have you both with us. So the first item of business tonight is board reorganization and election of officers. Um, I would be open to continuing and would enjoy that opportunity, but and also would like to open nominations if there are others that would like to um, put nominations forward. Dan? I nominate Paige Lewis to be the next board chairman person. Thank you. Is there a second? I will second that. <laughs> well, actually, I think we have to do nominations first. Are there any other nominations? Sorry, I'm a little rusty on my order of things. OK, if there's no other nominations, uh, all those in favor? I guess I can vote. I find this part very awkward. <laughs> Any opposed? <laughs> All right, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to continue to serve for you. Um, we do need to also elect a vice chair. Um, Dan is our current vice chair. Um, I don't know, Dan, if you want to say anything about whether you are interested in continuing to serve or not. I will, but I recall a year ago, Scott was interested. So if there's somebody else who would like to be, I'm fine with that either way. Then sure, I would, or maybe I'm misremembering. Was there someone else who wanted to be vice? I'm happy to do it. Nicholas, it go Nicholas. for it. it. It was me, but I think Daniel okay, I'm sorry, my job. mistake. My mistake, okay. sorry, Nicholas. All good. Go for I it. Will nominate, I will nominate you, Dan, for as, oh. as, as I start this right. <laughs> How about that? Okay, whatever it takes. I'll nominate Nicholas. How's that? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> then we have to vote. Are you both interested in being considered? No, I want Nicholas to do it because he was so nice last year. All right, all those in favor of Nicholas serving as our vice chair, please vote say aye. Anyone opposed? Great, thanks Nicholas. You are our new vice chair and thank you Dan for your service last year. Okay, let's move on to approval of the agenda. Hopefully you all got to, oh yeah, Jeff. I think it'd be a good idea for Erin to introduce herself and tell us uh, just a little bit about her, if you don't mind. Oh, great. <laughs> Darn, I was hoping not to talk too much this meeting. Um, my name is Erin Angel, and um, hmm, I've lived in Longmont for almost 20 years now. 
And I know I look so young, right? Like only just 20 years old. Um, I was born here. No, I wasn't. I was born in the Midwest. Um, I've lived all around the United States and some other parts of the world. I was a park and parks and recreation administration. Uh, that's my master's degree at Chico State in California. And I work at Centaurus High School and Angevine Middle School. I work for Cottonwood Institute, mm -hmm. teaching um, uh, guiding trips and connecting young people to the outdoors and um, teaching them environmental advocacy skills. And I hablo un poquito, well, I hablo a lot of Espanol, but not perfect. Oh. <laughs> great. It's so great to have you. Sounds like you have a really well suited background and interest. So it'll be um, fun to have you as part of our conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. I'm excited. God damn it. <laughs> Daniel, I'm not on mute. <laughs> I'm looking for my chat button. Dan Wilford. <laughs> Dan, mute. Okay. I'm good, thank you. Um, well, I'm I'm hopeful that we all <clears throat> will be able to meet in person again at some point this year. Um, we did get to see each other once during a field trip, which was very nice. And hopefully we'll be able to go back to meeting in person at some point during this year. But for now, here we are. So we'll move on to approval of the agenda. Hopefully everyone could look at the agenda in the packet. Does anyone have any questions or any proposed changes? If not, um, can I get a motion to approve the agenda? I move we approve the agenda as it stands. I'll second that. Second. Great. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Great. The agenda is approved. And then we'll move on to approval of the previous month minute. Um, we haven't met since November, so the previous month's minutes are from our November 8th meeting. Did anyone have any questions or changes from those minutes? Yeah, Paige, I did have one. If we could just correct, it'd be great. Okay, go under, ahead. The, under the Union Reservoir um, Access Management, um, I think it says that the primary reason for closing this was. Um, potential for aquatic moss species to come come into the, the boats and being unchecked. And that's in A20 um, or, or A with the Union Reservoir and it's down towards the bottom. But if we just really put in there um, invasive nuisance species is the primary reason. Okay. Any other questions or changes? Great. Okay, so I need a motion to approve the minutes as amended. I move that we okay. approve them. David. Second. Also second. Great. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Great. The minutes are approved as amended. Okay, now we'll move to our public invited to be heard. And I understand that we do have one member of the public who has asked to speak tonight. Yes, we do, Chair. Member of the public, uh, you have three minutes to address the board. And also please remember to state your name and address for the record. Hi, and I'm supposed to leave my camera off, is that correct? Yes, please. No problem, okay, great. My name is Adrian Chenault. Uh, I live at 310 Pratt Street 
and I am here to request that uh, the Recreation Department open up additional hours and or courts for indoor pickleball during the winter season. Um, in particular, I would really like to see some pickleball availability on the weekend, whether that be at the Recreation Center or at the Memorial Building. Uh, this last weekend, I made a trip up to Loveland who has open play on the weekends just to see what that was like. And they have three courts that they make available for open play uh, for about a three hour block on Sundays, I believe maybe also on Saturdays. And so that would allow for 12 people to play simultaneously. And they had uh, around 30 people there to play throughout that entire block rotating through continuously. And uh, actually several people from Longmont who had also made a trip up there because they were hoping to be able to play on the weekend. So uh, pickleball is the, the fastest growing sport in the United States. Uh, and just anecdotally from a few times over at the rec center on the weekends for uh, kids basketball games, we have young kids here. Uh, you know, the, the court that's taken up by a volleyball net seems to be almost completely unused uh, except when actual match play is happening. And so uh, that could be a great candidate to free that up and to use that for a couple of pickleball stripes instead. So that's uh, that's my request. And thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to come and share. Great, thanks so much for taking time. We really appreciate it. Um, Jeff, I don't know if you wanted to add anything before we close out. No, we'll, we'll certainly look at that. Um, Saturdays are going to be tough this time of year with basketball starts this weekend. The Memorial Building historically hasn't been very suitable for pickleball because we have sport court there and the ball doesn't uh, bounce true. So people really struggle with that. But certainly we can look at some time on Sundays. I will have uh, one of the staff at the rec center reach out to Adrian and see what we can come up with. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jeff. Really appreciate Thanks that. Thanks so much. Okay. Are there any other members of the public to be heard? Not at this time, Chair. And we'll go ahead and close the public invited to be heard section and move on to old business. Oh, we have no old business. That's fast. So let's move on to new business, which will involve um, designating our meeting day and time, meeting location, um, posting of private agendas on the private agenda calendar. So Jeff, should I turn it over to you? Do you wanna lead this? Sure, I can do that. Uh, each year, uh, the clerk requires that we take care of uh, some uh, business on uh, to make it official on when we're going to meet what what day of the month and at what time historically we met the second uh, Monday of every month at 6 30 we can keep that or if someone has other suggestions we can certainly talk about that I'd like to deal with each one separately so we can have a motion on each one Right. Does anyone have any proposed change to the meeting day and time? Great. Okay. Do we have a motion to accept the second hey, Monday hey, at six thirty? Hey, Paige. This is this is Steve. Sorry. Uh -huh. um, I, I've missed the national championship game for eight years running now because it's always the second Monday in January. Could we make January twenty twenty three meeting on the third Monday? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> You're welcome, Steve. <laughs> Next, it'll be tennis matches. <laughs> I get it. So Jeff, you, wanna, you and I have talked you about this. Problem. <laughs> you want to do a vote, Jeff, on each individual piece? Yes, if we could, please. I thought you had wanted to do them all at once. OK. Um, Okay, all those in favor of continuing to meet on the second Monday at 6.30 p.m. Um, all those in favor? Okay. 
Any opposed? I think we're good on that one. Okay, so the next one is meeting location and with meeting virtual, this is kind of an odd uh, one to talk about, but historically we've met down at the park shop and would need a motion that when we go back to meeting in person, that that would be our meeting location. Does anyone um, have any Aaron, objections you know to that? that? Yeah, is. go ahead, Dan. Aaron, do you know where that we're talking about? Sunset and the railroad tracks across the street from, um, I can't think Isaac of the name Walton? of the park. Isaac Walton. Isaac yes. Walton. Okay, yeah, across I think you know where that is. Okay, where just so you know what we're talking about. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that you wanted me to know where it was so I didn't wander around aimlessly. I suppose yeah. realistically, Nicholas, you and Scott have never been there either, right? I mean, it's a <laughs> weird year we've been having. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, Paige. Okay. Do we have a motion to continue um, having the parks building be our in-person meeting location when we're able to return to in-person? Can, can I offer, like, why, why would we meet inside at a shop? when we could meet across the street at one of the parks that we serve? Just question mark. Well, part, part of it is we need access to internet and that sort of thing. It, it really isn't the shop, it's the park's office building. And, you know, very well suited for that. We have uh, TVs so that we can do presentations. That there doesn't, there's nothing that says we can't meet in a park or at a different location. This is just to these items really educate the public that when we are back in in uh, that location that they know when, where, and what time we meet every month. That's that's the reason we're doing this. Okay, would anyone like to make a motion about the meeting location? I move yeah. that the Parks and Rec Advisory Board continues to meet when we meet in person at, was at seven South Sunset uh, in the meeting room in the front there. Yep. I have a second. Uh, thanks, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Great. And, and then the final thing for uh, notification to the public each year is where we're going to post our agendas, and that is on the city website. We would need a motion to approve that. But we'll also let everybody know that we try to put paper uh, notices at the Civic Center uh, at the, the three recreation facilities and at the senior center as well. But we had only, the official site is the city website. Nicholas? I will motion to continue posting the agendas on the city website, 2022. Thank you. And seconded, all those in favor? Aye. Thank you. Okay, I think we're good with all the standard designations. Would you like to move on to the PRAP calendar discussion? Yes. Yep. So all of the staff is prepared to provide information uh, as the board has questions this evening. Each year in January, we try to identify the items that you all would like to talk about during the, the year. Um, there's always things that come up during the year that we add to the calendar, but would like to hear your feedback on what you would like to see us uh, discuss this year. We did include in the packet a list uh, of potential agenda items. And do uh, you want me to go through those or how, how would you like me to handle that? 
Um, yeah, why don't we run through it just okay. quickly and maybe talk about where where you got the this list and then we could have just kind of an open round robin. People can suggest if there's other topics that we should be considering. Sure. Yeah, uh, last week the staff met and uh, tried to come up with uh, potential items that we thought you might be interested in. Uh, again, we can add or take away however you want to do that. The first item on the list was an update of uh, master plans for park rec and trails, open space, recreation, as well as Envision Longmont. And that process will kick off sometime this year. We are working very close with planning to take their lead in the update of the Envision Longmont uh, comp plan in an effort to try to reduce the number of meetings that the public may have to uh, or may want to attend that we could consolidate those and do some of our work at those same meetings. Um, don't have a lot of detail on that. The, the uh, planning staff will be going to council in uh, sometime I believe this month to present that option to city council and to get their feedback on whether they would be interested in us uh, doing that or not. Uh, Dan and uh, Danielle would like to come in February to talk about the Button Rock uh, Preservation, or excuse me, Reserve, and uh, talk about uh, the work that they've been doing uh, up there. Uh, STEAM discussion, which is uh, uh, some of the business development uh, along the river and in conjunction with the uh, flour mill. That is a topic that uh, council is doing a lot of work on uh, this year, and uh, you will hear that uh, probably multiple times uh, throughout the year. Uh, continuing on what we had talked about last year of working towards uh, another recreation facility, um, discussing missing sidewalks and trails. Um, every several years, Steve does that presentation, and it's a a really good presentation to kind of see where the gaps are in, in the trail system. The capital improvement projects, uh, what we would like to do is, is possibly in February, come and review the CIP projects, capital improvement projects that we are working on for 2022, and then come back the, the following month and really talk about what, what your thoughts are for the 2023 uh, CIP process. Um, we talked about joint, uh, a joint meeting with sustainability and water, the water board. Um, those are two separate boards um, and that could possibly tie into the potential drought restrictions that could be coming this, this year. We thought it'd also be good for you all to be able to interact with the other boards and there are a lot of things that uh, that those two boards do that inter interact with uh, the things that the Park and Rec Board does. Uh, talk about the potential of a new outdoor pool uh, in the CIP and, or excuse me, in the master plan currently, it talks about a second sunset type pool out at the Dry, Park, Dry Creek Park. Uh, potential of renovating Sunset Pool in, at some point in time. Um, discuss the Ranger program. The, David and his staff has done a, a lot of thing, great things uh, to improve the Ranger program and they like to share that with you. A lot of times you don't really hear a lot about the parks operation plan and how timber uh, helps to maintain all the parks. We thought that might be a, a good uh, presentation. Discussion about art in public places. Um, uh, their, their projects are funded by 1% of the capital projects that are done by the city. Uh, some of the work that they do go into the, to the parks. And I believe Steve uh, said that they're working on uh, some some art project right now, he might be able to respond uh, more about that. And then also 
discussion about recreation program, uh, have the area supervisors come and talk about the various operations that we have in recreation, uh, talk about uh, the festivals and special events that we do, and, and possibly talk about our cost recovery program. That uh, is uh, one of the financial programs that uh, we have in the budget. So those are kind of our, uh, let me add one other thing that's not on your list, but I heard from uh, other staff in March, um, there are staff in sustainability that are working on a zero waste resolution. They'd like to come in March and present their thoughts uh, to the board and then come back in May and present their findings of their discussions that they've had uh, with uh, other members uh, and other boards uh, in the community. So that, that's the list that we have. Anybody have any questions on Great. any of those things? Yeah, I'd love to hear from board members if there are any of these that you want to prioritize, if you have questions, if you have other topics you'd like to consider. Nicholas? Thanks, Paige. Uh, so I, I definitely want to get into specifics here, but I'm just thinking, Realistically, how many of these could we uh, reasonably take on in the agenda for 2022, right? Is it like roughly half? Is that a fair estimate? It's really a question for, for everyone here, how we wanna think about doing this. So I think that'll help us make a decision on which ones we wanna prioritize because we know like how many we can reasonably pick out of the list. I, I would guess that we could take on half or three quarters of them. You know, one of the things that David and Paige and I have talked about is trying to keep the meetings to two, two and a half hours at the most. In years past, we've had meetings that went on three or four hours and are pretty wearing after that two, two and a half hour mark. But we certainly can plug them into the cal calendar based on your priorities and we can backfill if we can't put them all on, or we can carry those uh, into uh, 2023 also. My thought was, but well, sorry, David, I'll just make a quick comment. I mean, my thought was also just based on past experience. Some of these might be like a main topic at one meeting, but then sort of a follow on at future meetings. So like if I think about the talking about the master planning or even a new recreation facility, you know, we may dedicate a lot of discussion to a new recreation facility at some meetings, but then just touch on it for updates at other meetings. So I think it depends on how much time we wanted to spend on any of the topics. David? That's what I was gonna kind of say, Paige. I think it really depends. I think staff, as Jeff said, we're trying to get, so we can be a little, more on respect everyone's time in these meetings and staff can probably do a tighter job of getting these presentations down to a pretty tight presentation, but it depends on how much time um, the board would like to discuss them. So it makes it, that makes it a little challenging, but we could probably put a couple of these, if we look at here's a heavy topic and here's just an information piece, we could probably do a little bit of that as well. But I would agree with Jeff. I, I think three quarters of those, we could, we could try to get those on there. And, and I think maybe what, what we could do tonight is if you could identify your priorities and then David and I can take that list and, and work with Paige and get them into a calendar that we can present to you at the February meeting. Great, so Nicholas, did you have specific topics? Or do yeah. you want to, if we were in real life, I'd give you all like little, you know, dots and you could vote, but I don't know how to do that dot voting on Zoom. We'll work with what we have. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, given that we want at least three quarters of that, maybe it's more of an exercise of, of pulling out what we know shouldn't make the list is maybe another way to approach, approach this. Um, so, for example, the, the art and public places, isn't there a separate board that discusses that? I didn't quite understand 
uh, what the relevance to crab is for that one. I Steve, think you, Nick Steve, is the, sorry. Steve, could you respond to that? Sure, yeah, sorry. Um, Steve Ranswell, Senior Project Manager. Um, we try to work with AIPP as much as we possibly can to integrate art into our new parks where possible. And we're also tasked with working with the AIPP coordinator and the artist to integrate art into our existing parks. So you have to think about things as far as safety, um, vandalism, that sort of stuff. So we are actively involved with the AIPP program because a lot of the art pieces that are placed are within our public properties, which are obviously a lot of our parks. Need more than that, Nicholas? Steve, I'm gonna ask on there. Um, I'm guessing that this wouldn't be, that wouldn't take up a whole meeting. I, I would imagine that that would be just, you know, AIPP would let us know what what they envision going and we'd say, hey, that looks cool or that doesn't look so cool. And 15 minutes done. Um, somewhat correct. Yes, I think it could be handled with an update if we're working with AIPP on an art piece. The Parks Board does not get any sort of vote as far as what the art piece is going to be. That's the AIPP board that gets to, to vote on that. So. Um, Yes, you you're, you're, you're right. No, Steve, Steve no. covered it. Okay. Um, I'm in O's. Welcome. Um, I'd love to at least hear from everyone sort of what you think is most important. Um, I want to make sure that we get what you think is most important onto the agendas, and then I think we can fill in other things as we're able. Is that question for me? No, we're sorry, Manoj. We're in the process of talking about potential um, board meeting topics. Okay. Sorry, my apologies. My apologies. Um, yeah, Nicholas, go ahead. Okay, so now I'll just focus on what priority was. Uh, so it's probably to me, uh, seven and eight are the combo, right? Uh, discussions with the sustainability and water boards, uh, as well as the potential drought restrictions, is something that I think would be uh, pretty pertinent something that we want to focus on. Thank you. Other board members you want to jump in? Yeah, Dan? Uh, my two most important would be number four, the new rec facility and uh, some combination of nine and 10, a new outdoor pool or renovation of sunset pool. I guess as another one, I would also be interested in the um, missing sidewalks, trails. Um, I know we've seen that, maybe it wasn't last year, the year before. Sometime you did this before, Steve, but it's always a reminder of what things we're supposed to be daydreaming about and getting out and visiting and stuff. Great, thanks, Dan. Um, Scott? Um, so I, I think from the several discussions we had um, last year about the, the rec center and then the work that, that um, I guess went on during Longmont Lights, I, I'd really like to hear the follow-up about uh, the rec center and um, what, what the public thinks about the rec center uh, based on what the plan was there. And then um, and if the new council is interested in bringing that forward and, 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 and that sort of thing. So I think that's one of my top ones. Uh, missing sidewalks and trails, always top priority for, for me. Um, I think the CIP is always a good one to go through um, and to evaluate and to um, kind of weigh in on. And if there's a fourth one, one that sort of comes up over and over again, and then it, we don't really discuss about it, is on that maintenance side, especially when we kind of pair it with CIP, um, there's always talk about with the CIP, there comes new maintenance for new projects, but we don't really have a sustainable plan of how do we build um, sustainability in our maintenance of all the things that we currently own. 
And um, so I don't know if that was what uh, was sort of intended as, as part of uh, Timber's presentation or it was more very specific of what he does during the summer or something. But um, I think that's right. That's what we're hoping to present. Okay, that'd be great. Great. Anne? Um, I I have another thought, which is this, since we have Councilman Waters on the call, I hate to put you on the spot, but uh, just to stay ahead of the curve, Councilman Waters, do you see uh, city council things on this list that we should be prepared for or hit the ground you know, already that we know about or have thought about that you, that you expect that they're gonna ask us about? Uh, thanks for the question, Dan. Um, I would have commented under board comments um, or raised the question, what is it that I can, that I, that you would, that I could bring to this group as a liaison that would be of greatest value to your work? And obviously that would be one of them, you know, what's kind of in the, in the queue or in the conversation with council. Um, there are always uh, a park recreation and open space issues that the council is paying attention to. What I will do, it, what I'll bring to these meetings are what's in a queue uh, the next month or six weeks out. So I'll, I'll give you a heads up of what's coming. Right now, um, I, I would not say that we've had an active conversation about, um, about a new rec center. Um, I've had that conversation with, individually with folks. I do think um, we, we are about to receive the results of a library feasibility study. And I think when we get that, I think it's I think that it would be a real important conversation to, for you to talk about what your aspirations are in relationship to a couple of other big potential proposals that are going to be presented to the council and to the community potentially. And I think that would be I think the timing would, would be a missed opportunity if if you weren't ready to to be in that conversation with and what else. In addition to library issues and performing arts and conference uh, conference center issues or considerations. Do you have a specific suggestion on time frame for that councilman? I wish I did. I the uh, <laughs> I was in a meeting earlier or uh, late last week, uh, wondering where is that library feasibility study we were supposed to have a couple of months ago. Um, uh, I, I uh, Paige, I think that I think the time I think it's soon. Um, I think in the first quarter of 2022, we should have the results of a library study. I think uh, I'm hoping that that the council receive a, a presentation and some maybe some recommendations from the library advisory board. Um, but there's a trifecta. And I've had some of this conversation with David and Jeff. Uh, we've got there's some big, big potential proposals that are going to come out of the library feasibility study, the performing arts. And, and I know that there's energy in this discussion about uh, where to go with recreation centers. And I think the time is, is coming this year. And I think uh, you need to, to join that conversation in the first quarter of 2022, I'm guessing. And I'm happy to, um, Aaron, when the time comes to go into as much of that detail and strategy and what people are thinking and you know what you know where you might want to go and not want to go with just conceptual ideas or whatever whatever value i can add to your discussions i'll do my best yes all of that <laughs> would be great uh Minos or aaron do you want to add what your priorities would be for board agenda topics I'll go ahead and go. Um, I uh, think cost recovery is important. Um, I'd like to see what's going on with cost recovery and what we're thinking about that. Um, I think recreation and special events, kind of um, figuring out what we're reprioritizing because um, everything was canceled and we have a, a really great opportunity to get rid of some things and bring some new things on. I think that would be really interesting. Um, I think my top priority is always sustainability. So uh, say sustainability and water board, but I think that also goes with button rock preserve. 
And then um, if I got to vote for five, not four, zero waste. Great, thank you. And I'm excited about traveling on all those missing sidewalks and trails. I think that's a field trip, that'll be fun. That's six. Manos? Yeah, so being living in Southwest Longmore, I would definitely be interested in new rec center, uh, which was proposed and uh, upgrades uh, at the Tri Creek Park. Um, those are the top priorities for myself. Um, that is in my mind. Um, and then the next one I'm um, more interested in upgradation of the uh, Garden Acres Park where the cricket pitch is. Uh, it has been a lot of issues with the water clogging in into that area. And uh, the that's specific sports is being held or moved time to time from there. So I would look, look for the upgradation of Garden Acre. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to make a list over here too so we can follow up. Um, I'll just add that I'm really interested in hearing about the um, master planning and, you know, updates both the comprehensive review of the Envision Longmont and the specific department uh, master plan. So definitely want us to be involved in those conversations. Um, continuing the new recreation center facility is, uh, that conversation is really important too, I think. And I actually see that as kind of connected with the other conversations about pools and, um, and such. Uh, I also am really interested in the kind of long-term maintenance of our parks and open space and also how we as a city are thinking about uh, making sure that we continue to prioritize both our existing and our new um, parks and open spaces as we continue to, to grow and develop so we don't lose those opportunities. Um, and I also, this is more just an information topic, but I'd love to hear what the city is thinking about um, anything related to funding from the infrastructure bill that passed. I understand a lot of that funding is expected to come through local government. Um, so at some point, once I don't know what the city is thinking about that, or if you have a plan for taking advantage of potential infrastructure funding, I think it'd be really interesting to hear about that as it relates to our subject areas. Anything else, Jeff or David, that you would like to add on there? David? Not so much to add, but I think that this conversation definitely, definitely helped because um, I think look at those priorities, we can look at some of those other ones that either if we have to remove some, it'd be easy to remove those, but other ones, I think we could really, we could make a 10 minute presentation just so that the board gets an idea of what we're talking about. I think your two page of ones, I was really just want to make sure that again, we can try to tighten those presentations up on button rock and the master plans, because those will be items that we'll be asking the board to, to respond to and vote on. So um, definitely need to make sure those are on there, but if you guys have other priorities, we'll try to keep those as tight as possible. Um, so we hit those other items, but um, definitely want to make sure you're informed enough that you can make um, good decisions as you're helping us move that forward. Great, thanks, David. David, can we get extra credit reading on uh, Button can. Rock? Thanks. I would yeah, we'll get we'll get all those links and stuff. As we get more information on the master plans, we'll keep you engaged because there'll be there will be public outreach meetings. So you guys are welcome to go to those as well as as residents. Um, but again, as you go to those, sometimes it's nice to have a little bit of background on what we're trying to accomplish. So um, our our goal, like Jeff said, with trying to do and kind of umbrella sort of guiding process with um, the Envision Longmont and these other updates within that that kind of keeps us all moving in the same direction and tries to keep us from having so many meetings for the public um, that they don't have to go to a rec one and then a envision one and then a parks and natural resources so um, just trying to, to help facilitate that conversation so yes lots of reading well 
on just a second. Councilman, is there anything else you wanted to add in terms of topics we should consider? Uh, no, it's 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 a, it's, an, it's a good list. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lots of a big potential initiatives. So um, yeah, if you can, as much of that ground as you can cover, you'll have a, a rich, uh, productive year. Thanks. Dan, go ahead. I have a question again about number one, and you sent, uh, I guess, um, the, all those links were sent out. Are all of these things, the PRTOS rec and vision, are they all getting updated this year? Did I understand that correctly? Yes, they are. David or, or? Yeah, that's, that was one thing, again, that's the reason is we all started looking at how many updates were going to be there. If you can imagine each one of those having its own public meeting and then having staff members that are going to be subject matter experts on each and every one of those, it'd be a lot of ask from staff and also the public. So we really are trying to figure out how we can work with, with planning to say, can we do um, sort of a guiding um, overarching plan that brings these other pieces into it and try to maximize people's times and the involvement. We looked at some other agencies like Denver that have done similar projects. So it's not, you know, totally making something up. And Aaron Fosdick with planning as the one that's going to be trying to help us um, take this forward. And Jeff mentioned, we'll probably be taking this to council. I think all these documents were approved through CIP process. But I'm not sure council even recognizes how many were out there and kind of how that might look. So I just want to make sure they have an idea of what we're thinking of doing as staff. It might look a little bit different than they've seen in the past. And it might be a way to use some synergies and funds as well to get stuff done. Thanks. Okay, unless there are any other additions, um, I will plan to work with Jeff and David and they will work with staff and we'll try to sketch this out over the year and see how much we can fit in, making sure that we give emphasis to the topics that were prioritized. Um, we'll also hopefully try to do one or maybe even two field trips or field meetings this year. Um, was really great to get out when we did that last year. If we continue to have this warm winter weather, we could maybe even do an earlier season field trip. But We'll see. I haven't run that by anyone to see what kind of response I get. Um, so then we'll come back. Does that sound okay, Jeff and David, if we work together yes. to yep. kind of sketch this out for the year? Of course. Yeah. Great. It's exciting. Lots of great topics. Okay. Um, next, we would move to discussing items from the packet updates. And so as a reminder, this is generally where we as the board are able to ask questions specifically about things that were included in the board packet. So the memos from David about parks and natural resources, the memos from Jeff and staff about all the recreation programs. Does anyone have any uh, questions that they would like to ask for clarification or more information on those updates? That. Uh, yes, so for um, Steve, um, in the packet for uh, Resilient St. Brain, it said uh, design slated to start in 2021 um, for one of the sections. And I don't know if that was, um, if it's old information or um, if there's an update to it. And uh, um, so I want to find it for you, Scott. Yeah, it's it's um, it's it has to do with the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, they were supposed to give us a 60% plan set in December. It's January. They want to go out to bid by May, but we haven't seen any plans. So I think that May date will probably push. I have not heard anything from the the feds yet on that, but um, we are still waiting for the plans between Boston Avenue and Sunset Street. That's where they're gonna build the, um, the levee between the Isaac Walton Pond and the creek. Uh, the Boston Avenue Bridge project, hopefully will be out to bid here in the next four or five weeks. And that'll be a, probably a 15 month project. Um, and then the Army Corps project will be at least 12 months. So that's why we're saying that the 
the Greenway Trail will be closed between Price Road and Sunset Street for the next 18 to 24 months. Okay. Thank you. Uh huh. Any other questions from the packet update? Dan? Uh, my one question tonight, one, only one question tonight <laughs> is uh, to Dan Wolford. You, there was a few things about land acquisition, but the last sentence is, we would like Prab to consider an open space sales tax extension and or increase November, 2022. Surely you're gonna give us more information than that. I, I, I thought last in November we discussed, oh, that's that will, the thing doesn't run out until 2030 or something. So we're, is this serious? We're going to do this a vote in November? That's a, again, um, from our perspective, we shared that with Jeff and it didn't rise to the top for, for this list. But certainly from that perspective, cash flow and dollars available for land acquisitions and uh, is certainly few and far between at this point in time. Um, as you saw in my update, we just spent five and a half million dollars for 130,000 acres um, just to the west of St. Vrain State Park. Um, as I said, money is very tight and we need to be extremely selective. Um, looking at consideration for an open space sales tax, hopefully um, looking at it maybe in perpetuity, similar to the transportation tax would be of an advantage to our open space and natural areas programs. So I, I think Dan Olson, I, I think, you know, just again, getting that out there for this group to talk about, I, I think we need to keep in perspective of, you know, rec centers and other things that Herald and city managers and councils have out there as um, items they need to put in front of the public. But I think we really do want to start talking about that. As Dan said, we, it doesn't run out for a while, but, um, Funds are tight and we can then rebond if we have additional um, capacity in that too. So it does help us, um, but it's the thing that I think this group is the right group to have that conversation. And then we can continue that conversation um, internally with council members and with um, all the other items the city has to kind of put out there in front of the public, but definitely a good place to start the conversation at least. It's clearly a decision of priorities. Okay, it's just sooner than I, I got the impression of at our last meeting. And so I wanted to make sure I didn't misunderstand. Got it. All those in favor of. <laughs> <laughs> I tried, David. Yeah, I, thank you, Jeff. Okay. Any other questions from the packet updates? So nine's a mistake. That should not be on the agenda. Uh, <laughs> I was just going to ask, wait, what's <laughs> ongoing items? I thought we changed that. Okay. So we will move next to items from staff. But do any staff have items they'd like to discuss with the board? Uh, I'll, I'll I want to respond to Scott's question earlier. So we haven't done anything with the uh, the rec center based on what uh, Tim was saying tonight, we'll start uh, meeting with uh, uh, administration and kind of get some parameters and some guidance of how they want us to move forward with that. And we'll uh, get working on the survey that we had talked about, I think it was in September or October. That, that's all I had. Uh, oh, one other thing. Jeff. And I'm, I'm just one quick Go thing. Ahead. Just, just uh, everybody probably is aware of this, but uh, the number of staff that we are able to hire right now is very difficult. It, there are, there are times where, if our staff get sick or COVID or have a, uh, they want to go on vacation, we are struggling to keep facilities open. Um, we're having, I would guess, at least three staff a day come down with the virus and prior 
within the next two weeks going to have to look at closing one or two facilities to be able to keep the third one open. Uh, so it, it is difficult times right now. We continue to meet with the staff from Human, Human Resources on other ways that we can um, try to advertise to get staff. Uh, we've done two job fairs on the third and then yesterday at the rec center. Uh, the first one we had about 20 people show up and yesterday we had, um, it was around 16, but the, the folks that are there are, you know, we interviewed them right away and uh, those that are um, qualified were trying to work to get them hired as soon as possible. So uh, it is a challenging time right now. Paige, I just wanted to add from staff things, um, it's been a little bit of a, a long time, but the naming for Workman Neighborhood Park, as far as uh, Nino Gallo Park, is currently planned to go to City Council on the 25th of January. So there's been a lot of people who are interested in that happening, so there, it should be a good meeting. And then uh, I think February 22nd is when we're looking to name South Clover Basin Park, Clover Meadows Park. That's the current plan in the uh, council agenda. So just wanted to make the board aware of that. Great, thanks Steve. Any other items from staff? Dan? Unless there's other questions about our update, the only update that I have is really for Steve and that it's a six to three uh, score with Alabama leading in the second quarter. Yeah, I've been tracking on my phone too, thank you. Um, <laughs> field goals, I cannot believe this. So I wanna go home and watch the defensive battle. Okay, anything else relevant to the board from the staff? <laughs> Okay, any items from the board? So do board members have anything that they would like to bring up? Um, doesn't have to be related to what was in the packet. Scott? Um, Jeff, I just had a, a follow up on, the, I wanted to see how it was going with the uh, vaccination only Memorial Gym. Um, I know a Memorial Gym I think went vaccinated people only uh, December 16th or something like that. Just wanted to see what the public's response has been and um, you know if it's been well received and it's gone swimmingly or you had the typical folks uh, screaming and yelling who don't actually ever go there. Well, there, there were a few of those and you know there was there was something on Facebook and we were told there were like 90 comments. And of those 90 comments, 80 of them didn't even live in the state of Colorado, which is just bizarre. So, you know, we, I would say we had two real legitimate comments after we uh, went to the vaccinated facility, um, worked with, with those two folks. I, I think one of them chose to try the rec center and the other one was waiting for us to stop doing the vaccinated facility. I would say we were getting 38 more people a week, so it, it did make a difference. As of today, we're no longer doing that based on uh, the new recommendation from Boulder County Public Health that everybody needs to wear a mask. They really recommended that that no longer be offered. So we, gave, we were notified of that last week. We gave people, uh, five days of notice and then required mask again starting today. If, if we can, we would probably look at doing that again in the future. Um, again, overall, the people that actually were working out at the Memorial Building really liked it. They were very pleased with it. Great, thank you. Yep. Any other items from the board? Yeah, Tim? Yeah, Paige, I just will reiterate 
there are only two reasons I think for liaisons of count for council liaisons to these boards and commissions. One is if there's a way for us to add value to your work. The other is to make certain that council members know, hear what you wanted to hear. So, um, you know, I'll, I'll think hard about what I can bring to this board in terms of adding value and I'll listen carefully. So if there are things you want me to take back, don't be bashful about letting me know. And, um, and don't, and don't be shy about, I'm easy to reach. If there are things you, you, you feel like I can bring that I'm not bringing, let me know. Thanks so much. We appreciate that. And I, I did along those lines, I did want to note that part of the we the board had, I guess probably September was our most recent conversation about the new recreation facility. And I think we had really broad interest on this board to um, restart that conversation in whatever way was appropriate. And we had talked a lot about, you heard the references to surveys and you know public engagement, because I think we were really interested in knowing where the people of Longmont are with that right now and really doing some robust public engagement and surveys to inform a next iteration of that. So I anticipate that as you with the new council start talking about that again, just know that this board previously has been really interested in that, bringing that conversation back and understanding where the city is now and how we can move that forward really effectively. You know, I don't know where for, for Jeff and his team, as he just said, you've got across the city, uh, every department is struggling with staffing the, the, just the basic functions of city government. It is a real challenge. Given that, if, given that, um, you know, how, how, mustering together the, the group that could put together the right kind of survey, right? Because what you ask is going to be real important and how you ask it as, as, well, as well as who you ask it of. But the timing on that's going to be uh, sooner rather than later in terms of in terms of shaping a survey and doing data collection, um, because I I just think we have a remarkable maybe a once in a generation opportunity coming up this year relatively soon. Parks and recreation ought to be part of it, and you and you what what you'd like to do is not miss the opportunity, and um, and I think it's possible uh, if we're creative enough to put together the kind of a proposal to a community that would bring our recreation community, our arts community, and our friends of the library together, right? All pulling in the same direction on a grand proposal to the community. But, um, but we have to be ready for that. And? Jeff, I hope that sounds familiar because 20 years ago, we did this, right? Senior yeah. Center, Museum, rec yep. center, bingo. Yep. Interesting. I wasn't here for that. <laughs> um, okay, I did have one more one question. Unless there anyone else has anything, um, I was just wondering. I saw in the update, Jeff, in the recreation update that it seemed like at least in the early winter things were going well with the ice program. And every time I've been there, there's been good attendance, but I wondered if you could just give a quick update on how things are going with um, the ICE pavilion and with the programming. Yeah, like, like anything outdoors right now, they, it's very successful. And, you know, when I talked to staff over the holidays, we were averaging 100, <clears throat> excuse me, 150 per day, sometimes 150 per session. And so there really was no room for anyone else to, to be there during the holidays. This time of year after school starts uh, going, you know, the kids go back to school, things slow down, but that's when we really start doing the, the programming with hockey and learn to skate and figure skating that uh, it's, it's been a, a really good year so far. I will bring or uh, include in the packet next month kind of financially where we're at as compared to 2020 so that you can see that. That'd be great. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Any other items before we move to adjourn? 
Great. If not, then uh, can I get a motion to adjourn the meeting? Dan, I'm thank you. Can I get a adjourn the meeting? <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. Dan, do you want a second? I'll second that. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Great. Thank you. The meeting is adjourned.